Hey, what's up everybody? Dylan here from Iceberg TV. Today, I have the weirdest bag of discs that you have ever seen. What I have here today is a big stack of discs that I have made videos on for my ongoing series, Weird Stuff Wednesday. Now at this point, I think I've done at least 15 to 20 episodes of Weird Stuff Wednesday. So today we're gonna play with all of the Weird Stuff Wednesday discs um, that I at least still have at this point. Now I have lost a few Weird Stuff Wednesday discs and there's a few discs here that I have for Weird Stuff Wednesday that actually haven't featured in its own video yet. But we're gonna do a quick in the bag here. We've got the UFO, this disc is like world famous at this point. We've got the UFO Superdome, Calvin Destroyer. We've got the Latitude 64. Um, this is the Missilin. We've got the Latitude 64 Rakuten with the cool dimples on top of the disc and the weird thumb pads. We've got the Discwing Quarter K, very, very old school disc golf disc. We've got the Quest AT T-Bone with the dimples on the bottom of the disc. Quest AT T-Bone. We've got the 100 meter laser. I, who makes this thing? Oh, this is another Quest AT. We've got the 100 meter laser here. We've got the Gateway Alien. It's got like an Arobi Epic style bottom with two different rim widths dimples on the top and then it's in this weird like super stiff glow plastic we've got the aerobi epic the original weird rim disc um i didn't have a mid-range so i put this in the bag this is the gateway element with the weird nine glide flight numbers but this is probably the least weird disc we have today we've got the end of a piranha which i think might have been my first ever disc of ever use for weird stuff wednesday we've got an original ching juju putter We've got the Aerobi Arrow, which kind of has like a Berg style top, but this thing's absolute, just like paint lid. Very cool disc. We've got the Go For It, Innova Gopher, 130 gram, just straight up lid style, super class disc. And then we also have the Innova Condor, which is like a, basically like a giant rock. So that's what we're working with today. So hole one here at Hornet's Nest, we've got a 288, about a 300 foot par three. Um, we got the 100 meter laser. This hole's about 100 meters, slightly less, but I can't think of a better disc for a 100 meter hole than the 100 meter laser. Wow, okay, I remember that thing flying really badly when I reviewed it. That thing feels and flies absolutely terrible. Then we've got the Quest AT T-Bone, which I do remember to fly a little bit better than the 100 meter. We'll also try out the Disc Wing Quarter K. Wow, that guy's still pretty stable. All right, let's do it. So Weird Stuff Wednesday is a series that I've really enjoyed making over the last year or so. Um, I definitely missed some weeks, some months here and there, but overall I love testing out weird, unique, rare and obscure discs. And I'm starting to get quite the collection of these weird, bizarre, and strange discs. So I expect to do a few more episodes over the next few months. So here's the deal. If this video can get 1,000 likes, I will sign up for a PDGA B tier or higher using only the Weird Stuff Wednesday discs. Now I expect to shoot like some 820, 800 rated golf uh, shooting with these discs. Most of them are pretty terrible, but I think it'd be super fun to go out, play a sanctioned tournament with these discs. So if this video gets a thousand likes, I will go out and shoot around with the Weird Stuff Wednesday discs. So make sure you hit the like button. So I'm not sure what my putter should be. The Ching Juju is not terrible. The Arrow is not terrible and the Piranha is not terrible. Um, it's kind of not a really great putt. The Arrow is like a substantially worse Berg and then we've got the Juju. Now, a lot of these discs do fall into the discontinued category but they at one point were PDGA approved and most discs that have previously been PDGA approved are still allowed for usage in tournament play today. For example, this Araby Arrow. I don't think they've made these things for at least 10 or 15 years, possibly more, but I can still PDGA legally use them in a tournament. All right, hole two, we wanna try and hit this tunnel here. We'll try the 134 gram gopher and we'll try the arrow here. Honestly, if I can get up there for a putt, this would be an absolute miracle.
Wow, that was pretty good. The gopher's absolutely gigantic. Then we've got the arrow here. I think it's so hard to throw. All right, on the last hole, those first two putters didn't feel great. We're gonna try the Innova Piranha here. Got a weird little sort of straight to Anheuser putt here. Not a bad gopher drive, honestly. Just to show you guys how big the gopher actually is, the arrow easily fits right inside it. So the gopher's an absolute unit. Hole three, we've got a nice 600 foot par four here. We'll try the Missilin and the Rakuten. My biggest problem with these discs is that you do have these nice thumb pads for grip, but they don't really fit for forehand. So it's almost like a backhand only disc, unless you just wanna slip right off these dimples here. It's not a great feeling hand for forehand. We're gonna do what we can. We have at least one disc in the bag that we can throw forehands with. So let's see if we can't make one of these two guys work. Had enough stability, surprisingly. I guess they stopped making these because the dimples on the mold would wear out and then it would stop working. So this guy you can see has a little dot in the middle there. So I'm wondering if the mold was getting worn out and all the dimples just didn't make it onto the disc. That was what I heard. You let me know in the comments below if you know a little more than I do. But let's see how the missile flies here. Get through. I mean, it's a black disc, so you can't really see it, but that actually got all the way around the corner. It should be near the bridge, which is gonna put us in a potential birdie look situation. I'm sure a lot of you guys don't know this, but early on in Latitude 64's um, producing of discs, they actually came out with overmold discs. They had the dimple discs. Um, they had a lot of weird technology that you wouldn't expect from most disc golf brands today. They've strayed away from that as they've grown more popular. But back in the day, they took some of the biggest risks when it came to disc design. So that's when we saw discs like the Zion, the Fuji, the Overmold discs, and the Rakuten, and the Missilin with all the dimples on top. You don't really see a lot of that stuff going on anymore. But back in the day, they were really experimenting with a lot of different things. I was literally almost standing on this, but because of the way that it's died, it's like literally invisible and it's on the ground. So the Discwing Quarter K was advertised, I believe, based on the name, to be able to fly a quarter of a kilometer, which would be 250 meters. There's only like six people in the whole world that can throw 250 meters. I'm not one of them, but it was stable when I threw it on hole one. So let's see, this is where my um, missilin landed. Let's see if this guy's stable enough to get me up and around to the right. It's so deep, it feels horrible in the hand. We're gonna have a long putt, but we'll have a birdie putt nonetheless. This thing flew actually pretty darn good. Let me know in the comments below. Do you guys think I should be able to use my Latitude 64 overmold discs if I do play a tournament with these discs? Let me know in the comments below, or do you guys just want me to use the worst of the worst, um, similar to what I'm using today? And on this putt, we're gonna find out, is it the archer or is it the arrow? In this case, I can blame the arrow because this is the arrow. I'm gonna take a drop. My disc is over there. It's fricked. It's in the bush. Come on, arrow. Oh, it's so bad. That thing feels so awkward coming out of the hand. Oh man. We're here on one of our first par fours of the day. We've got a few par fours to get through today. We're gonna do the UFO Superdome Calvin Destroyer. And I do also wanna try the Rakuten on the big backhand line and see what kind of distance we're gonna get out of this bad boy. Let's go Superdome first, then Rakuten. <sighs> oh, it's a little too high. That actually had a better flight on it than I was expecting. Got a pretty nice tailwind that's gonna keep them nice and stable. Rakuten. <sighs> that thing has a really nice flight on it. I should be in another spot where we can get a possible birdie, which with these discs is pretty exciting. Now the UFO Superdome Destroyer is probably illegal for PDGA use due to the manner in which it became Superdome. Someone illegally modified it, then sent it to me. Um, I'd be willing to try using it in a tournament because the PDGA rules are kind of wonky 
And as long as nobody calls me on it, then it's not technically going to be an illegal disc. So I'd be willing to give it a try. And honestly, if someone tries to call me out for an illegal destroyer, I actually think that'd be pretty funny content. So yeah, let me know. Should I try using the Superdome or should I leave it to the side and rely on some of my other distance drivers? And for those of you who haven't seen the full review of this thing, I mean, look at that poppy toppy. I've got an absolutely beautiful drive, actually one of my best on this hole ever with the Rakuten. We're gonna try the Quest AT T-Bone in, also featuring dimple technology, but on the bottom instead of the top. That thing still has a nice flight on it. It doesn't glide much. That's kind of like a, kind of like a T-Bird, except not nearly as good. And one thing that's been going on recently that really excites me is Scott Stokely bought the original Ching Juju mold and started producing some um, Stokely disc Ching Jujus with the original shape, original mold, original branding. That's super exciting. Now we're seeing Gotta Go, Gotta Throw, a disc golf retail store. They actually bought the original mold, to my understanding, of the Quest AT Turbo Putt which I did have at one point, but I lost it. I threw it, turned into a roller, rolled into the bush, never saw it again. But the Quest AT Turbo Putt was a putter with ridges on the outsides for your fingers and a spiral on the inside. So you can do what's called a turbo putt where you throw the putter, instead of putting it normally, you kind of spin it like that. So we've got the Ching Juju back in production and we've got the Quest AT Turbo Putt back in production. I'm curious to see what other discs come back into production now that we've seen those two come back. All right, hole five, we're gonna try out the 100 meter laser. What's fun about the 100 meter laser is we have UFO Superdome mode, but you can just pop that down and boom, you got sports mode just like that. So we can go Superdome or we can go sport mode. We'll try this one in sport mode. Then we're also gonna try the uh, Gateway Alien here, which feels absolutely horrendous. And I have no confidence throwing into this headwind. If I can get inside the circle, it'll honestly be a miracle. Oh, I slipped. Wow, that was a pretty severe slip. All right, it's up to the gateway alien. That thing looks so weird flying through the air. All right, unfortunately, I think the Juju is probably my best putter. The Piranha feels horrible and the arrow feels even worse. So we're gonna have to trust the Juju for now. Oh, that might have rolled into the water. That's bad news right there. Just over that ridge right here, there's the basket. And just long of the basket is the pond, but fortunately we're safe on the edge here. All right, hole six is 300 and something feet. We got the quarter K here and the T-bone. I think the T-bone might be my best disc for this challenge. It's just nice and stable. It's actually like dependable. This should be parked for birdie. The quarter K keeps surprising me by how stable it is, but this thing is about as deep as an AVR, but it's got the rim width of an 11 speed, which leaves it feeling just ridiculously uncomfortable in the hand. Come on, skill. All right, I think the T-bone's parked. Maybe we can actually get our first birdie of the day. All right, on the last hole we threw the laser in sports mode. Let's go with UFO mode and see if it can hold a hyzer or if it just flips no matter how you throw it. Well, that was actually kind of fire. I think I like it better in UFO mode than in sports mode. All right, we've finally achieved our first birdie of the day. So we've got the 100 meter in UFO mode, probably 10 feet out, but just like I expected, we've got the T-bone about two feet from the basket. So we can just tap this in lefty camera putt with the 100 meter. One thing that's pretty cool, they actually elevated this basket. This thing used to be probably three feet lower. Now it's much higher. All right, hole seven, we've got another big par four here. We're gonna go with the Rakuten forehand and the Superdome backhand. This is definitely a birdieable hole if I can get a big enough drive. That thing actually flies really nice. It's kind of an underrated disc, honestly. The Rakuten is absolute fire. And then we've got that pop top, super dome backhand. Oh, 
Oh, too stable. Don't skip off the road. Now we're just on the other side of the road. I think that Rakuten's gonna be in a really nice spot for birdie though. Yeah, that's literally parked. That was such a nice shot. Well, all right, guys, that is going to be the end of today's video. That was eight holes with all of my Weird Stuff Wednesday discs. Um, some of those discs are probably not PDGA approved, like the Gateway Alien. Um, maybe I can get away with throwing it, but we got the 183 gram Alien here. I'm willing to try to throw it in a tournament and see if I get penalized for it, but I, so I think that would actually be kind of funny. I'll be doing a review of the Arobi Epic. Um, I'll be doing a challenge and review with this guy very shortly. Shout out to my boy Wes for hooking me up with the Epic. Um, I got a couple other discs in here that might be illegal. Again, I'm willing to attempt to throw them in a tournament just because I think it'd be funny if someone actually tried to call me out on it. So yeah, 1,000 likes. I will play a tournament with this bag. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video and take care.